I stumbled across this really cool website. Um, it's called Better Bones, and it's run by someone called Susan E. Brown. Let's look at Susan before I go into this article. So she is a clinical nutritionist, medical anthropologist, writer, and motivational speaker. I think she has some really good credentials. And she wrote this article about the paleo diet that I actually 100% agree with. <laughs> Funny, right? Because a lot of people pushing meat-centered diets are not looking at actual evidence of what Paleolithic people ate. They're just making stuff up, I feel like. Oh, we were, carniv we were apex carnivores. No, we weren't. <laughs> um, if you look at the actual data, you will see we got a lot of fiber. Um, anyway, I'm not going to get into those arguments. I just want to talk about this article that I agree with. So she's talking about the amount of nutrition that we got, we, Paleolithic man, got when they were hunting and gathering. So if you look at minerals, mineral intake was two to eight times higher for most minerals except sodium. Sodium was at least five times lower than today at 768 milligrams per day, while potassium intake was four times higher um, than ours at 10,500. Iron intake was eight times higher and manganese four times higher than ours. Vitamin intake was estimated to be two to six times higher than ours. For example, vitamin C intake was more than six times as much. Six times. We're not eating liver to get our vitamin C at six times much as much. You could be eating peppers, but not liver. And vitamin E are nearly fourfold high vitamin E nearly fourfold higher. That's a lot of sunflower seeds you'd have to eat <laughs> to get that high vitamin E. I don't know how we got that. Salmon. Salmon gets you up a little bit too. Folate and vitamin A intakes were twice as high. Fat intake was estimated at just two-thirds of ours at 21% of calories, including almost one-to-one -one ratio of beneficial polyunsaturated omega-3 fats to omega-6 fats. Today, we consume some 30% of calories from fat, including 10 to 15 times more omega-6 than omega-3, with 18% of our fats as refined vegetable oils, including substantial amounts of harmful trans fats. Paleo diets had no processed oils or trans fats, nor any refined vegetable oils. Protein was one-third total calories, twice, twice as much as ours. There were abundant sources of plant and animal protein, including wild animals, which have low body fat. Can we repeat that three times? They didn't have the fat that our animals do today. To get that amount of fat, you'd have to eat like lean chicken breast, um, maybe the very leanest cuts of red meat, the very leanest. We're talking like one gram of saturated fat per serve. We're not like some beef has like six grams. We're talking one gram or less for wild meat. I've done videos on this if you want to go search them, but it was not that much fat on them. And there was more poofas in wild meat. Okay. Fiber intake was five to eight times higher than ours at 100 to 150 grams per day. We are talking vegan levels here, guys. These are vegan levels of fiber. These are not regular omnivore levels. I think, what is it that people get? I think the, the dietary recommendation is like 30 or something. It's down there. It's not very high. And people don't even get that. That's how low our fiber intake is on a general omnivore diet. If you're interested, look into my chronometer breakdown of different diets that I just did recently. You'll see that it's not very high on these Weston A. Price, healthy whole food even, or even just general grocery store diets. You're not getting that much fiber. You're not getting these levels. These are vegan levels of fiber, guys. Carbohydrates. Carb intake was similar to ours at 46% of calories. They were not low carb. 
They were higher carb, but all carbs were from whole unprocessed foods. Refined sugars, obviously there's none. Grains and cereals, none or minimal. Not saying they're bad, just saying there was none or minimal. Dairy, none beyond infancy. That's a funny thing that carnivores include dairy. And I think their rationale is like, oh, we could have found like a pregnant mother once in a while and drank their milk. Sure. But that's not going to be an everyday thing. It may not even be an every month thing. You know, you're not going to be relying on dairy for your calcium. To get my calcium, I rely on plants. And you can rely on plants for calcium. But you have to dedicate your time to eating these foods. And I think a lot of people just want to eat foods that are yummy, which makes sense. That's fine. But in my opinion, you should take supplements then. If you're just going to eat foods because they're yummy, you should take supplements, just like a vegan has to take supplements. Um, to get calcium, you have to eat a couple, like a few cups, probably like three to four cups of bok choy every day to get your calcium, along with all your other foods, even your beans and everything, like all together, you need, you need all that. So I dedicate every night to getting my calcium at my dinner. I either eat bok choy. Last night I had broccoli. Broccoli is not as good though. But bok choy and broccoli are very absorbable forms of calcium, more absorbable than milk. I steam my broccoli and bok choy to get rid of the goitrogens. Um, but you're also going to lose some of the minerals. Um, cruciferous vegetables in general are really, really good sources of of um, calcium. I would say oranges are a good source, but the the acid is really hard on the teeth. Um, tahini has a bit of calcium, but like it all adds up. You know, you could you could get calcium from. I believe it's figs have a little as well and stuff like that. So you'd have to eat like all these things in conjunction and together they would add up to your calcium. Leaves, leaves, leafy greens are good. Um, edamame is good. So tofu. Um, but on days when I can't get those or like, like I just ran out of bok choy and I'm going grocery shopping today. Maybe I'll get enough today to not have to take a supplement. But on days when I can't, for whatever reason, I take a calcium carbonate supplement. Calcium carbonate is basically limestone. And I can imagine a Paleolithic ancestor once in a while eating dirt or limestone or whatever because they crave it. I can see them doing that. I don't think it's like out of, you know, the realm of what's possible. Um, they probably also nosh on old bones <laughs> or bones in general. Like, I don't know if they, I think I read once that the Inuit would like grind them up and sprinkle them on their food, like, you know, to get that extra calcium. Some cultures would actually ferment bones under the ground and eat that. But like, you don't have to, you can just take calcium carbonate. I think I haven't seen a difference. My nails are strong AF. My teeth are great. Um, I don't take the calcium carbonate. I get it from, I try to get it from my greens and stuff, but I, I do both a little bit of both. Let's say mostly greens. My kids take the calcium carbonate because they're not going to eat four cups of bok choy at the end of the day. And so they take the, the calcium carbonate and their teeth and, and fingernails and everything are great. Oh, my bone density is really good too. Like from my scale, my Dara fit track scale, it's, it's good. So anyway, um, that's what I'm, I'm thinking about these diets. And we'll go into um, this lady a little bit more because I think she is really interesting. So obviously alcohol, none. So Dr. Brown, and, and these are her resources, by the way. She uses a lot of Cordain and Eaton, which I agree with Cordain and Eaton, even though Cordain started the paleo movement. Um, and maybe that's gotten a little blurred with all the new input from different people. Um, I agree with Cordain and Eaton said in their studies because they, I think they, they put the information out there as it is. They didn't try to change it for, to sell something or to like, to, 
well, maybe they did, but to, you know, they put the information in their studies the way it is because they're being peer reviewed, right? <laughs> like they have to. Anyway, let's check out Susan E. Brown. I think this woman looks amazing. I don't know how old she is. I wish I could find out. Let's see, does she say? <laughs> By the way, I'm this age, probably not. Okay, so um, she takes a lot of supplements, okay? She takes supplements, she has a bone supplement. Look at this woman's hair. I don't think she dyes it either because I'll show you a video. You can still see the gray. She might be dyeing it in these pictures. Um, but in the videos that I watched of her, you can still see the gray at the sides, but it's still dark at her age. And she looks like she's, you know, I don't know. What would you guys say? Like 60s, 70s? I would say that. Um, let me find that video. Okay. Can I zoom in? Yes. See, you can see the gray. Look at how much color this woman has to her hair. That's flipping amazing. So she's clearly getting her minerals. And yes, she takes supplements. She has a bone supplement and she, she tests her the pH of her urine in order to figure out the amount of mineral she has in her body, which I don't know how accurate that is, but maybe she says between 6.5 and 7.5, I think means you're kind of getting enough minerals potentially. But um, yeah, she's got amazing color to her hair. My mom actually has amazing color to her hair too. <laughs> um, and I don't know if that's genetic or maybe she just gets amazing minerals. But she's clearly getting enough to have that color in her hair, I think. And there's stories about Anne Wigmore, you know, with all that wheatgrass juice and stuff that she restored the color to her hair and her students having like tested strands of her hair and seeing that it wasn't dyed because they wanted to know. Um, so I think minerals can restore color to your hair potentially. So she, yes, she does take, I think, minerals and, and other supplements. Um, but I think she looks pretty good for her age. And I agree, you know, if you're, not everyone wants to sit down to eat four cups of bok choy at the end of the day, um, or four cups of chard, steamed chard with their meal. I'm personally happy to do that. Um, I don't necessarily eat, I don't know, I'd like to say I don't eat for taste, but I actually love the taste of it. That's the time when I put salt on my food too. I don't always, I don't salt the rest of my food if I can, if I can avoid it. Um, if I eat a grain, like I'll eat oatmeal that I don't have to salt. You know what I mean? So, um, and I think that's, that's fair. I think omnivores, if you're not willing to plan out your meals and, and see what foods you need and not necessarily, you know, I want to watch this video. That's why I'm stopping. <laughs> Not necessarily like eat for pleasure. Like you're eating for your nutrition. You might, you might have to do that. You know, if omnivores don't want to do that, even on, you know, a because basic omnivore diets, it really depends on how you plan them. You have to plan them properly. You have to be, you know, drinking milk, for instance, to get your calcium. If you're not going to eat plants for food or plants at all. Um, for calcium. So yeah, I, I just want to watch all these videos right now. Um, so you have to kind of eat for nutrition, not necessarily. Paleo people didn't eat for, I mean, they ate for pleasure. They ate because that was what was there. <laughs> they didn't eat for pleasure. Um, so if you're a pleasure eater, you kind of have to, I think you have to supplement. That's my opinion. If you want to leave out certain foods, potentially like uh, animal foods, I think you should supplement. I don't think it's, I think it would be better for you to supplement at least protein powders. I think that's a really good replacement for the meat. Otherwise, you're going to have to eat an F ton of beans. <laughs> you're going to eat three times a day like the Nic Nicoyans do, you know, in the blue zone. They eat beans and rice and corn tortillas three times a day. That's what they, that's their food. And sometimes an egg thrown in there once in a while. But that's basically like what they eat is what I've, 
under, come to understand looking at, you know, seeing people who have gone there to visit them and stuff. That's what they eat. So that's kind of what you have to eat if you're going to rely on beans alone or take, you know, an, a more condensed form of protein from tofu, tempeh, seitan, soy free tofu. Like those are the things you have to eat in order to not eat meat. And even if you are going to eat meat, if you're going to eat for pleasure, then I think you're going to have to take supplements and potentially, I don't know, find a way to lower your cholesterol. I don't know how you're going to do that. Maybe eat, maybe you could eat plants that lower cholesterol. I think there's some, right? I haven't even looked into this. Maybe I should. But anyway, or just choose, choose your, you know, instead of beef, maybe eat fish. Fish is yummy. I like fish. So anyway, that's my take on this. I think if you're a pleasure eater, you're you're going to have to take supplements too, I think. And if you're someone who wants to avoid meat, potentially you should look into more dense sources of plant protein. Um, if you want to eat for pleasure, I don't know, like you're going to have to, you're going to have to supplement with a protein powder. Maybe you can find a really yummy one. I found a really yummy one. It's called, um, vegan pro what's it called veg pro raw nutrition makes this veg pro it's like maple vanilla oh my gosh it literally smells like vanilla pudding it's so good so you know if you're a pleasure eater you can eat that as a a source of you know protein or if you like tofu tempeh all those things I personally love those things or if you're a pleasure eater and a vegan um you could I guess use those you know mock meats I think that's what a natural vegan does. She's more of a pleasure eater, I would say, than like um, eat for this nutrient type person. And she seems to get everything. Um, I know people are going to argue with me. (laughs) I know they're going to argue with me. But she tries real hard to get everything, okay? Um, So anyway, that's my review on Susan E. Brown. Realistic look at the paleo diet. Realistic look at it. And she still takes supplements, and I agree with that. And if you are going to eat like um, a healthful paleo diet, what I think you're going to have to do is focus on lean fish, you know, white fish, um, lean chicken breast, and then you're still going to have to eat plants in the amounts that almost vegan e- vegans eat. You're pretty much going to have to eat like a vegan diet with lean fish and chicken and stuff like that. Kind of what I was doing on my fruitivore diet. Um, That's kind of what you're going to have to do, in my opinion, if you want to actually follow a real paleo diet. Okay, that's it.